Greetings YouTubers, I'm Rick the Tech Enthusiast here with a little tech bit video on how to use the 74HC595 shift register for 32 bits. I kinda alluded to this in lesson 24, but now let me show you an example. Okay, so here's the circuit. As you can see that uh, not all these components were included in the Elegoo kit. For instance, I had to buy a much larger breadboard and I had to buy some additional shift registers and resistors and a bunch of these three millimeter LEDs. I had some five millimeter LEDs that we were trying to use, but it just got too crowded down here. So we just, so I just went ahead and replaced those with the, the three millimeters that I purchased. What was included is this Elegoo um, breadboard power supply, obviously the Elegoo Uno R3 board the, the regular jumpers, but these little pre-made, prefabricated uh, little jumpers, those I purchased also, uh, they just make the board uh, a lot neater and cleaner. So what we have here is the power supply breadboard, or the breadboard power supply, and they're both set up, each of these little jumpers here for five volts. So these rails over here are running at five volts. What I have here off of the USB port is it's feeding the Elego Uno R3 board. And then we have the regular jumpers that were we used before in lesson 24, which I believe is the DS pin, the latch clock, and the registry clock, or the register clock. And we just jump those over to the first register. So this is the first register, the second register, and the third and the fourth. And what I do is I come out the serial output of each of these registers. And let's see what we have here. So I have the output there right there. And well, right here, sorry. And it's a little small jumper because I didn't have quite the right size. And then this jumper leads to the DS input of this register uh, shift register and then in the output it continues and repeats itself to the third shift register and lastly the fourth the latch clock and register clock those are jumpered back over in this part of the board and what i do is i just uh, kind of repeat these to jumper and do uh, well parallel connect all these register shift registers together using the same latch and register clocks. The output from the power rails on this first part of the breadboard is connected to this upper power rail, which is in turn jumpered into this power rail. And I believe uh, I have a little jumper right here that I kind of squeeze to feed the, the ground on this power rail. So the output pins for Q0 runs like I did before outside the IC and then jumpers over to here. That makes it kind of neat. And then I try to spread them out. So this is Q1, the jumpers over here and so forth for all the different outputs of the first register. And that connects to the resistors that in turn connects to the individual LEDs. And I repeat that for all four shift registers. As you can see, the output enable pin, which I believe is this guy right in here, which is hard to see. That's this pin right here for this one. They're all connected to the ground or the negative. So that way all of them are acting the same. So they're all enabled and the master resets are all connected to the positive which I believe is um, this one right here, this little jumper, which would be this jumper right here, are connected to the, the power rail, the five volt power rail, so that all the master resets are held high so that it doesn't reset. The most important thing to remember is to use this breadboard power supply because with these many LEDs all coming on at once, even though I'm flashing it for a short period of time, that would easily overload 
the Elgo Uno R3 board. Next, let's go ahead and show the revised sketch. So if you remember back from lesson 24, I had the modified 16-bit version of the shift register 74HC595 with 16 LEDs, which I, there was two back-to-back -back shift registers connected together. This time I have the shift register 74HC595 with 32 LEDs, four back-to-back -back shift registers. I included a pseudo circuit diagram in the sketch. So if you want to take a look at that, that's there if you want to view that. But let's cover the changes from Lesson 24's 16-bit version that I created. So the big changes, um, I believe I had the direction state also included in the previous sketch. But the big changes is the in the update shift register. Here I included an unsigned long LEDs. And why we have a long is that we need the full 32 bits to control or manage 32 LEDs. I believe I also had the Boolean is MSB first to control the direction in the previous sketch. I kept that here in this sketch. One of the big changes was I also have this um, couple local variables where I took the long and I um, I divided it up into two 16-bit chunks. So the LED 16, which is an integer, takes the integer of LEDs. So it just basically lobs off uh, the upper part of the 32 bits and assigns it to the LED 16. And then I have LED 32, which is supposed to be the upper part of the, uh, um, of the long LEDs. And what I do is I take the LEDs variable and I shift it 16 places to the, uh, to the right. And then I assign that to this other integer LEDs 32. So now I have the lower part and the upper part. I guess I could have renamed it to lower and upper. Anyway, the reason why I did that is so I can use the same trick I did the last time, which, used, which I used the low byte and high byte functions to, um, also remove the low and high bytes of each of these integers, and then I assign those to a low 16 and high 16 LED, and low 32 and high 32 LED. Now we broke up basically uh, that uh, long into four byte size chunks. Like before we go into an if statement, and we just check to see what direction we're going, if we're going um, one direction or the other. But what's important is the shift out. Now, the reason why I'm using bytes, I believe shift out is limited to a byte size value. So that's why I broke out that long into four byte um, variables. So anyway, we send off the byte value for the first part, which would be the lowest part and then the upper part of that, low, uh, of that low part, and then the basically the low part of the high part and the high part of the high part. And that sends it off the serial pin to the shift register. And then that just leads it through the output to the input to of all four until all four are filled up with the, with the full 32 bits of, of information. And what once that is done, we'll do the digital write and set the latch pin to high so that those values are then um, uh, carried over to the actual LEDs and output it out. The void setup hadn't changed, so we'll keep that the same, and we'll go on to the void loop. The void loop did change as well. So what changed here is we had this unsigned, this local variable unsigned long LEDs, and I'm showing it here as the 32 bits which represents the 32 LEDs. Here we turned it on, so it, all the LEDs on, and then we send that to the update shift register, and then we have a small delay. And what that does is it turns on all the LEDs. And as you saw before, it turns on all the LED, LEDs, has a small delay, turns off the LEDs, 
um, has a small delay, turns on all the LEDs, and then it has a delay. So it basically blinks real quick. And then once that's done, it uh, goes into this for loop, which walks through all 32 bits from zero to 31, so long as it's less than 32. And then we um, reset the LED's value, the variable, to zero. And then when we use bit set to set the one value, the one LED, we flip that one bit over and that sets it to the LED's variable. Now we then send the LED's variable to the update shift register like we did before. And we pass along the direction state like we did before. A small delay and it just loops through all those numbers. Then we change the direction state and it just repeats. And that's it. Well, that's it for this tech bit video on the 32 bit shift register. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have any questions or suggestions, or if you just enjoyed this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. And be sure to check out the show notes for additional links for other interesting videos and the code for this project. And please, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks and see you next time.